good morning students as in the previous uh, videos uh, we started with uh, module 1 and under the module 1 we came across the parallel computer models under this uh, topic uh, we have seen the computer generation then uh, elements of uh, modern computers so today in this uh, video lecture we'll see the evolution of uh, computer architecture the study of a computer architecture involves uh, the following one is the hardware organization and the second one is the programming or the software requirements the evolution of a computer architecture is uh, believed to have started with the own human architecture so which is uh, built as a sequential machine and executing the scalar data so what is scalar data and vector data we'll see in the next videos and major in this context we'll see as one is a look ahead parallelism and pipelining then we'll see the flint classification then we'll see the uh, parallel or vector computers then the development layers so first coming to the first topic that is a look ahead parallelism and pipelining as we can see in the figure so this figure is the a uh, tree showing architectural evolution from sequential scalar computers to vector processors and the parallel computers here uh, as we started with the own human architecture which is uh, built as the sequential machine executing uh, executing the scalar data so the sequential computer was improved from a bit serial to word parallel operations and from fixed point to floating point operations the own human architecture is slow due to sequential execution of instruction in programs so the look ahead parallelism and pipelining came into the picture so the look ahead as you can see here the look ahead technique were introduced to prefetch instruction in order to overlap the ie that is instruction fetch or decode and execution here operations and to enable the functional parallelism the functional parallelism as you can see here the functional parallelism was supported by two approaches one is to use of multiple functional units simultaneously and other is to practice pipelining at various processing levels then later includes pipeline instruction execution pipeline architecture computations and memory access operations so pipelining as proven especially attractive in performing identical operations repeatedly over vector data strings vector operations were originally carried out implicitly by software controlled looping using scalar pipeline processors now we'll see the flint's classification of uh, computer architectures So in the year 1966 Michael Flynn proposed a classification for computer architectures based on the number of instruction streams and data streams so that is named as the Flynn's taxonomy Flynn's uses the stream concept of for describing a machine's structure a stream simply mean a sequence of items so items includes data or instructions so coming to the first one that is a flint's taxonomy that is a sisd that is a single instruction single data so which is a classical own human architecture then second one the simd single instruction multiple data and third one mimd that is multiple instructions multiple data so which is most common and general parallel machines and MISD that is a multiple instruction single data. Now coming to the first one that that is SISD. So SISD is the single instruction stream and a single data stream. So SISD corresponds to the traditional mono processors that is only one computers. A single data stream is being processed by one instruction stream, as you can see in the figure. a single processor computer that is a uni processor in which a single stream of instruction is generated from the program now coming to the simd that is a single instruction stream 
and multiple data streams. So each instruction is executed on a different set of data by different processors. That is multiple processing units of the same type process on multiple data streams. So this group is dedicated to array processing machines. So sometimes a vector processors can also be seen as a part of this group. Now coming to the MIMD that is the multiple instruction streams and multiple data streams. Each processor has a separate program and an instruction stream is generated from each program and each instruction operates on a different data. So this last machine type builds the group for the traditional multiprocessors and several processing units operates on multiple data streams here. Yeah. Now coming to the MISD that is a multiple instruction streams and a single data stream. So each processor executes a different sequence of instructions. In case of MISD computers, multiple processing units operates on a single data stream here. Yeah. So in practice, this kind of organization has never been used. Now coming to the development layers, the figure shows a layered development of a parallel computers based on a classification by Linoni Ni in the year 1990. So this figure shows the six layers for computer system development. As we can see the, the upper four layers are machine independent and the lower four layers are the machine dependent. So machine dependent means these layers are which are dependent on the machine architecture. Machine independent means so these layers which are independent of the computer architecture here. The address space of a uh, processor in a computer system varies among a different architectures. It depends upon on the memory organization which is machine independent, machine dependent. These features are up to the designers and should match the target application domains. On the other hand, we want to develop application programs and programming environments which are machine independent. Independent of machine architecture, the user programs can be ported to many computers with the minimum conversion cost here. High level, high level languages and communication models are dependent on the architectural choice made in a computer system. From a programmer's viewpoint, so these two layers should be architect, architecture transparent. Then programming languages such as Photon, C, C++, Pascal can be supported by most computers. However, the communication models of shared variables versus message passing are mostly machine dependent. Application programmers prefer more architectural transparency. However, the kernel programmers have to explore the opportunities supported by hardware. As a good computer architect, one has to approach the problem from both ends. The compilers and operating system supports should be designed to remove as many architectural constraints as possible from the programmer here. Now coming to the programming environments. The programmability of a computer depends on the programming environment provided to the user. So one is the sequential environment and another is the parallel environment. In conventional uniprocessor computers are programmed in a sequential environment in which instructions are executed one after the other in a sequential manner. Whereas in the parallel environment, when we are using the parallel computers, so where parallelism is automatically exploited here. So now coming to the two types of parallelism, one is the implicit parallelism and the second one is the explicit parallelism. 
An implicit approach uses a conventional languages such as C, C++, Fortran or Pascal to write the source programs. The sequentially coded source program is translated into the parallel object code by a parallelizing compiler here as shown in the figure. So this compiler must be able to detect parallelism and assign target machine resources. So this compiler approaches has been applied in programming shared memory multiprocessors. With the parallelism being implicit, success relies heavily on the intelligence of the parallelism compilers. So this approach requires less effort on the part of the programmer. The second approach is the explicit parallelism as shown in the figure B. It requires more effort by the programmer to develop a source program using parallelism. Parallel I have of C or C++, Photon or Pascal. Parallelism is explicitly specified in the user programs. So this reduces the burden on the compiler to detect parallelism. Instead, the compiler needs to preserve parallelism and where possible assigns the target machine resources. New programming language Special software tools are needed to make an environment more friendly to use groups. Some of the tools are parallel extensions of conventional high level languages. Others are integrated environments which includes tools providing a different level of program abstractions or validation, testing, debugging and tuning, performance prediction and monitoring here. In this video we have we came across the evolution of computer architecture. In that we have seen the look ahead parallelism and pipelining. Then we have seen the Flint's classification. Then we have seen the development layers. Then we have seen the parallelisms that is uh, the programming environments. Thank you. Thank you for watching this uh, video lecture.